So today we have a beautiful free-range chicken. Our goal is to learn how to uh, basically remove the skin of the chicken, leaving the skin as intact as possible, and then using all the meat that we can uh, take off the carcass, so the, the breasts, the legs, the thigh, everything, and make kind of a sausage where the casing is the chicken skin and uh, it's called a chicken galantine. We're gonna roll this sausage, then it will be poached in, uh, in water for about an hour, and it's a, it's a great dish to be served warm or cold, but the interesting thing is how to uh, leave the skin intact of the, of the chicken. We're gonna... These, so you start by disjointing the legs and then easily I'm trying to show the camera where to place your knife because you don't want your knife to cut through bones you want your knife to cut through tendons and ligaments and skin if you try to cut bones with your knife you're just gonna ruin the knife by the way the chicken feet have a lot of collagen so it's a great addition to your chicken stock if it grosses you out, you can clip the nails before placing these in the stock. Okay. What else? We can remove the wings too. Same technique, you disjoint and you cut through the joint. Then of course we need to take care of the neck. So you can start by cutting the skin around the neck. Try not to prick it too much. You know. Or you can just use a cleaver. Just cut through. The neck is another great addition to your uh, stock. You don't want to use the head in your stock, so we can cut this off right away. Here, just go through the skin. And then you start lifting the skin. And with the help of your knife, you start removing the skin as if it was a shirt glued to the flesh of the animal. Take your time here, don't go fast, because anytime you prick the skin, it will make your life difficult later when it's time to stuff the skin with, uh, with the stuffing. If the chicken is not free range, if it's a caged chicken, you can basically do this with your, with your bare hands um, same if you know with, with small animals like uh, quails and stuff like that but if you're dealing with uh, wild animals like game or with free range organic chicken then the animal has exercise there is more collagen and the muscles are better attached to the skin and so on so here I'm taking my time I've already done almost half. There you go. Here might be a good idea to cut off the tip, makes our life easier. Save this for stock. Same on the other side. Okay. Good. So the dress is slowly coming off. 
And now we start working on the back. It should be easier to take off here. I don't know if you can see collagen here is not as strong. I'm gonna do to the these tips the same thing. I'm gonna cut them off, make our life easier. Almost there. Here you see it's firmly attached, so you might want to cut around it. Try not to prick this area because the stuffing would easily come out. Okay, better grip here. A bit slippery. There we go. Okay, we're almost there. One last section. It's still attached, close to the tail. And there you go. So we can put aside our chicken and stretch the skin to see if we did a good job. So we have our beautiful rectangle of skin here. Now we're going to learn how to debone our now naked bird. And, uh, and then we're going to see how to make the stuffing. So here we have our beautiful chicken. First thing we do, we disjoint the legs. We start by removing the legs from the carcass. Here you can use any sharp knife that you have handy. Make sure you cut between the, the bones and not through the bones. If you can see there, we want to start by cutting the oyster around the oyster. This muscle has a lot of flavor. You don't want to leave it on the carcass. Like that. Can you see? Try to remove as much meat as possible. We're going to see later how to remove most of the meat from the legs and thighs. Same thing here, we start by carving around the oyster. Legs, now we take care of the breasts. This is the sternum, the breastbone. If there are different ways of doing this, some people like to free the wishbone first. So if that's the case, you take a small knife you go like that. And this will help you. There you go. Save this for stock. Then sharp knife, you're running on one side. Where you want to use long strokes against the rib cage. If you know how to fillet a fish, it's a similar technique. But this time you don't use a flexible blade. It's not necessary for this job. Long strokes. That way you don't destroy this meat. Here there is a tendon that attaches the chicken tenders to the um, the wishbone, we're going to see later how to remove that. And then we're almost done. Always remember your fingers are underneath, huh? especially when you handle sharp knives. Here you go, and you have your chicken breast. One. Let's see what to do with the chicken fingers. You've got the tendons running through it. You put your nails down like that, push hard, and this comes off. 
This you want to save for stock. It's pure collagen. You don't want to throw it away. The chicken tenders you can eat separately if you like. I will put them in my stuffing. Then we learn how to debone these. We take a sharp knife, start cutting along the bones like that to free the bone. Can you see from there? These bones have a lot of collagen, so it will be a great addition to our stock. In fact, I always recommend if you're making stock uh, at home and you don't want to do this part like carving the chicken and so on you can always buy drumsticks and wings or if you have a good relationship with your butcher you can ask to save some of the bones and so on so we're gonna do the same thing to the other part I'm going to grind all these parts so I'm not being super careful about the way they look. If we were doing a different preparation where the chicken thighs would have to be stuffed, it would be a, a bit more precise way of cutting through. Maybe in the next tape I will show you that. Okay, good stock material here and pure debone leg and thigh. This will be ground later. Legs and thighs, legs and thighs. The two breasts, the two chicken tenders, and the scraps. So, while we are chilling our chicken meat, I'm gonna start grinding a big chunk of mortadella. It will add a ton of flavor to our meat filling, chicken filling. Okay, so it goes with the noise. The dial. To this, we're going to add about a tablespoon of chopped sage. About a teaspoon, teaspoon and a half of thyme, and the same amount of rosemary. Now we're going to start grinding also the chicken. I have trimmed the chicken breasts, you'll see why. I made them square. And I also recuperated, I don't know if you can see it from here, the heart, the liver, and the kidney, which will add to the stuffing as we go. So let's start grinding the chicken, which is not a pretty scene, but needs to be done. Kidney, the liver, everything goes through there. And there you go. Now we know that all the meat has gone through. gonna mix it really well with the paddle attachment of the KitchenAid. This is similar to what you normally do when you make sausages. It's called primary binding. Now the mortadella meat doesn't need this process but the rest of the meat does otherwise during the cook it might fall apart. Especially after you start slicing it's not gonna hold together. Some people like to add some egg whites at this point, which help the binding. Some people can add liquids, like a little bit of cognac can be added at this point. Uh, we're going to check the consistency, and if it feels particularly dry, we can add some flavorful liquid. Otherwise, we can just use the natural juiciness of the meat. We can add a pinch of salt. also helps with binding. Okay, 
you cannot see it there, but the meat starts holding together. I don't know if you can see it. Now I'm going to fry a small amount to see if the seasoning is correct or it needs more salt, pepper and so on. Go, we're frying a small piece and make sure that it's cooked all the way through. Let's taste the seasoning. Hmm. That's good. No more salt needed. So we can go to the next phase, stuffing the bird. We have the two chicken breasts that I squared off too, um, because it's going to go here in the middle. A few prunes, but you can use olives, you can use blanched asparagus, you can use all sorts of stuff, carrots, anything. It's just to make the stuffing look pretty when you, when you finally slice it. So we're going to start by making um, a bed of stuffing here. Stuffing, as you see, holds together really well. Now you can leave a little bit of skin on the edges. This will help, help wrap the meat almost as if you wrap a burrito. Okay, then we can put some prunes here, we can put our chicken breast on top. This is a bit long as you see, we can cut a piece off. more stuffing on top. So you start by wrapping the edges like that. The skin stretches a little bit so and it doesn't break easily so don't be afraid. There we go. Then the sides like that and the top. Here you have it. Water is boiling. We lower the temperature. We put our galantine, and this is the leftover stuffing. This will cook an hour. This will probably cook for about um, 35 minutes. I'm going to put a smaller lid on top so that these things will stay submerged. And I'm going to check constantly to make sure that the water does not come back to a full rolling boil. There we go. Okay. So it's been an hour. I turned off the heat. This is the other one, the little one, the little guy, also cooked all the way through, still wrapped in plastic. I'm waiting for this to cool a little bit before I cut it. This I will let cool a good 20-30 minutes at room temperature before I fish it out of the water and I put it on a plate and in the fridge to rest overnight. It's been about half hour. It's still quite hot, but I should be able to lift it and place it on a platter so that it can, um, it can rest in the fridge overnight. Time to check what happened to this beautiful chicken galantine. 
see there is a lot of gelatin so if you want to work on a clean cutting board you can recuperate and eat all that gelatin or you can use it in a soup in a sauce on many things and that's how it looks like you can see the skin of course the prunes the chicken breast and the the stuffing the parts that was ground and now it holds together really well it's cut in another section Here you go so all we have to do now is slice it call some friends and eat this beauty